everyone, it's Kathy Zilski here, back with another installment of EZ with me, CZ. Today I've got a card project that uses a stencil, a little bit of masking, and just some simple monochromatic ink blending to create a really fun little strip for the front of any card project. Let's take a look at the products I'm using today. I've got this awesome stencil from Simon, and this is called I Like Small Dots. And the funny thing is, they're not all that small, but the stencil itself is really large and easy to cover any space. I've got some masking tape. I've also got some masking magic. I've got some oxides all in one color, some blending foams, and dyes. We'll use a few other things, but let's get started with masking off a card panel. I've got a piece of tape on the back of this just to hold it into place. And this panel is cut to five and a half inches wide by four and a quarter tall. I'm gonna take one piece of masking magic, and you can use post-it tapes for this. You can use anything to mask off a space, but I'm going to use my mat to kind of help me get it lined up. The goal here is just to isolate a little band on the front of this panel where I'm going to use my stencil and my inks to apply color and, well, the pattern from the stencil. I'm gonna pop this down onto a craft mat, grab my stencil, get it into position number one basically, and just add a couple pieces of low tack tape just so that it doesn't shift while I'm ink blending. Starting with the darkest of my three colors, the reason I wanna do this is because I've chosen oxides, they really do layer together kind of cool, and if you start with your darker and work your way up to your lightest, you can create some really cool overlapping sort of see-through effects. So I'll lay down the first round of color, and this is picked raspberry, just blending this on with my foam tool. And these are the new uh, rounded domed foams. I really like these. Get that color in. I will take a cloth and just kind of wipe that off because I don't have a tool for every color, so I just kind of keep some tools for pinks and some for oranges, and so you know how it goes. But this is all pinks. I definitely have some for lighter and darker pinks, though. I'm gonna shift my stencil just a little bit here so there's an offset and bring in that second color, which is the Kitsch Flamingo. Fantastic pink, blending that on. And I'm not doing any shading or I'm not trying to get like a blend from one side to the next. I'm literally just going straight on with my color. Nothing heroic here, right? We are just laying down color through a stencil. All right, color number two in place. And I am wiping off my stencil in between each one just so that I get, you know, sort of the pristine version of each color. But you could use any kind of pattern stencil for this, right? It's just a really fun way to layer colors and play with your stencils to create bands of color. But this is, this is my favorite part. I feel like this is where the magic happened. It's coming in with this lightest color, the spun sugar, because it really does create this see-through effect when it hits the other colors like that. Isn't that cool? Look at that. Ah, I love it. All right, just for fun here, I'm gonna take a bit of my darkest color, that picked raspberry, smush it down, and I'm gonna add some water to it. I'm gonna put a little, my towel basically over my card so I can spray and I won't get water where it should not be. Then pick this up, this is just a little fan brush, and start tapping on just a little bit of that darker color. I thought it would just add just a subtle effect, right? Nothing, nothing too deep. Blot that off, and that's exactly what I wanted. I'm gonna peel that back to reveal that nice crisp edge that was protected from the tape, and do the same thing at the bottom. You could also double up your post-it tape or just use masking magic. I just, I thought I'd use one or the other, but that is the result. As soon as this is dry, I'm going to cut a slightly smaller panel out because I want this card to have a little bit of a margin. We're gonna pop this onto a card base. So I'm running that through my die cut machine and trimming that to have a nicely trimmed pattern. And there you go. I also cut out happy and everything off camera and I'm gonna spray everything together using spray adhesive. I do this in a box off camera because I don't wanna get spray anywhere near my computer or my filming camera. But I'll squish it all together, right? Layer that on carefully, get the, the serifs all lined up. And just like that, I've got a nice happy that has dimension and is ready to go. I'll also do the same for the everything word 
And again, I'll spray all of that and glue it together off camera. Now, I brought these together and in my mind, each one was gonna work just like that. And I felt that was too crowded. It, it wasn't quite what I thought it was gonna be. And then I had the idea, why don't I make two cards? And all I needed to do was rotate my card and then all of a sudden it felt like this is actually what I wanna do. Do you ever do that when you're designing something and you flip it? I do this all the time and I knew a little sentiment strip, one strip could go for two cards. So I used my sentiment labels. I cut out the you make me so happy, ran that through the die cut machine. And now all I'm gonna do is cut off the word happy so that I can get two out of the single greeting. So I'm just lining that up on my paper trimmer, getting it real close between those two letters, right? And cutting and then flipping that over and cutting the other side, doing it a little bit closer than I normally would just so there's equal side to side balance. See that? I've got a you make me so and a separate happy. I'll use a T10 marker from Copic, right? This is what I do with these sentiments just to color in the sides. I like doing this because it makes it look like they are actually white on black cardstock and it's a cool way to create that effect for these sentiment strips. Now it's time to assemble the card. We'll start by creating our card base. This will be a top folding USA2 card. So it's four and a quarter wide by five and a half tall. I've got foam tape on the back of the panel and you can see that nice little thin margin all the way around on the card base. I put some thin foam squares that I cut in half on the back of the smaller greeting. And then I'm also gonna put just a little dobby of liquid glue because this just allows me a little more play time before committing to the placement. And the reason I like to do this is I really wanted this to be straight so I can pop it down, bring in my clear T-square, press that up just to make sure it's straight. I feel like when you don't have much going on or especially when you have perpendicular lines that intersect like this, it's nice when elements can be straight. I'll add a little liquid glue to the back of the stacked happy die cut word and nestle that right in underneath. And that is centered on the little stenciled bar, but the you make me so juts out a little to the left and I love that look. And that's it. To finish off this card, boop, little liquid glue, boop, a little more as we work our boop. You gotta say boop, because if you don't, look what happens. Ah, it doesn't stick as well. Let's try it again. Boop. And voila. Isn't that cute? Five sequins creating that nice bit of repetition. I love it. Now here's another card I did with the everything and the leftover happy, but that one I started with the lighter color and ended with the darker, and it has a totally different look. So I hope you try this, grab some stencils. I would say start with the darker and then work your way up to the lighter if you have a pattern like this. But I hope this inspires you to give it a try. Thanks so much for watching today and remember to subscribe to the Simon YouTube channel. We'd love to have you and I'll see you back here next month with another Easy With Me CZ.